Hello, we are here in Armenia at the FastX Harmony Meetup. I am here with Pavel Armyan, program lead at Fast Token. Hello, welcome. Hi, hi, nice to meet you. So tell us what is Fast Token and how does it fit into the Fast Token or the FastX ecosystem and what's it all about? What's your vision? Sure. So Fast Token is the uh, native coin of the blockchain ba called Bahamut that we have uh, launched. Uh, not too long ago, like it's um, it's a little little over a year uh, or two years. Right That's now. wild how yeah. fast you de developed this, built this, and are now scaling this. So that's incredible. Go on. Yeah, it's an uh, EVM EVM based blockchain with a new type of consensus, mm -hmm. which we call proof of stake and activity, where activity is basically uh, the gas that people spent when interacting with smart contracts. And the whole idea is that if you're a validator on Bahamut and you also have a smart contract based application, the activity counts towards your chance of producing new blocks in the future. So the more activity your smart contract apps have, the more um, uh, chances you have to create blocks and essentially earn more fees from the network. Can you, for, for those who are kind of a, someone kind of casually paying attention, they hear proof of stake and they think of maybe Ethereum, right? Can you say a little more about how this differs from a usual proof of stake blockchain like Ethereum. So it's functionally, it's it's like exactly proof of stake, mm -hmm. right? It has the proof of stake, all the elements of proof of stake with the added parameter of activity. And you can view activity as like if you have a token, right, deployed, yeah. or if you have an NFT collection deployed and somebody buys or sells your NFT, right? You as the collection deployer, mm -hmm. if you're also a validator, will accumulate activity and get more chances to get more fees from the network. So essentially you earn more fees. Interesting. Right? What was the biggest challenge in implementing that in such a short period of time? So in terms of challenge, it's not more of a challenge, it's more of an approach and philosophy yeah. thing. While everyone is striving to create a, like a much faster and much cheaper chain, right? We decided to approach it from the more uh, philosophical standpoint of hmm. use, right? If you're doing business on the blockchain, uh, you should get rewarded for that by the blockchain mm. itself, right? So because if you're just a staker, let's say you stake... You're like just passive as opposed to yeah, you're inactivity very passive, and passive. Right? And yeah. you stake, like, let's say you stake today on Ethereum, right. and then some time goes on, and then the percentage of return, right, you earn from Ethereum goes down. Mm -hmm. Usually what you do is you take your stake out, yeah. go somewhere You're else. You're like, right. I'm, I'm done with this. Yeah. yeah. In this case, uh, you're being invested in the chain. Ah. And the more it you're invested, you're activity. in chain. It yes. encourages involvement. Yes. The more you're invested in the chain, the more the chain rewards you. Okay. So, this is a, so what are the, that is a shift in philosophy. What does that philosophical shift, what does it unlock for the average user how so is basically, experience feel different? Basically, if we, uh, if we put two blockchains on, like, on the scale, right? And let's say everything is the same, like they, have, they both have great communities, they both are very well known, very popular, and then you come in or somebody comes in as a developer or a user, right? And they want to create something on the blockchain. Mm -hmm. If you create it on Bahamut, you'll have the advantage to earn extra from the fees, right? whatever you do. Ah, okay. So it's a little, it's the hot sauce on top of us. Yeah. yeah, basically, yes. Interesting. Um, and as I understand it, you're soon launching a layer two? We've actually launched it already. Today, you launched it? Uh, some time ago. Okay, time okay. Ago. okay. not too long ago. Congratulations. Thank uh, you. What is now possible with this layer two solution? So the layer two technically isn't different from many other layer twos that we know. The reason that we launched it is that once we uh, passed the 6 million user wallet mark on Bahamut, and there was quite a few games operating on Bahamut, the chain was starting to feel a bit slow. Like it was You've already crushing. had 6 million users, yeah. did I hear? Yeah. Wallet addresses, in in yeah. one year. A bit, a bit more. <laughs> or, a bit still, more. less yeah. than two years. Yeah. That's wild. Go on, I'm sorry. So uh, we had to do something about yeah. it. It's a good and, problem to have, by the way. And yeah, yeah. implementing a layer 2 is an obvious solution. Yeah. Uh, in terms of technology, there is nothing new, but now uh, with the addition of the layer two, the blockchain is 
uh, less clogged, mm -hmm. right? The Palm blockchain is less clogged, and then we have the opportunity to create more layer twos as required. So it's more of a scaling solution for the main chain. You mentioned uh, earlier, you mentioned some games on there. Yeah. What are the, and there also there are 6 million users. So what are folks doing on there? What, what are the apps there and is, what, are the, um, what are the main use cases you're seeing? There's so a lot of games which are uh, connected to Telegram as well that have That's been deployed. very big deal yeah, right now. It's so a very, smart very, to, yeah, yeah, very good place to be in. And so these games um, are being like, you know, they're being played by a very, very wide community and there are different types of them, mm. but mostly what you do is you earn tokens sure. and then you get airdrops, right, from tokens. It's fair to call this a game five, right? Yeah. Uh, tapping, swiping. Yeah, tapping, swapping, uh, swiping, like, right. you know, running, whatever. Right. Whatever Amazing. you like to do. Sure, sure. Very smart to kind of draft into that right now. And uh, what other apps uh, outside of the gaming world, what are some other apps folks are building on the blockchain? So Bahamut has a grants program that is being currently active, very mm -hmm. active. And uh, recently uh, we have had new projects come in, a lending protocol, which is called Mutuari, mm -hmm. staking protocol, which is called Dolik. Decentralized exchange, it's silk swap. We have more decentralized exchanges coming in. We have NFT uh, NFT marketplaces being built with the grantors. There is bridges being integrated. So it's a lot of infrastructure building going on right now. One thing I feel personally is an important area in the Web3 space as it evolves is digital identity. I believe yeah. you have thoughts on this too. Uh, how do you see digital identity as evolving and what's FastX's role in helping to kind of solve the problems of digital identity in the Web3 space? So digital identity isn't a new concept, as we know, like it's being used uh, all over the world. But what we and many others are trying to do in the space today is combining blockchain with digital identity, which allows a more user-centric approach, mm -hmm. right? The user gets to uh, keep ownership of their personal data, like As opposed really, to getting it to a, the really keep the Facebook ownership of, the world, of it. Right? Yes, of yeah. course. And then share the amount of personal data that they want to share mm -hmm. or that is required to share, but not more, right? Or not less. So, uh, as we know, like the main, main, main use case, I think, uh, in the future is going to be related to regulations, right? Mm. As, we, as we all know, regulators are trying to do at least some type of, like establish some type of control yep. in the world of Web3. Yep. This goes against the Web3 philosophy in general, but you know, you can't, you can't really stop it. It's quite a tension. Yeah. It, it goes against, as you mentioned the word philosophical earlier, it's against the philosophy, but if you don't play nice, it yeah. could die in the exactly. cradle. So <laughs> uh, exactly, but yeah. playing nice uh, must uh, need not be like the nice nice of Web two, right? It can yeah. be something in the different middle. different kind of nice. <laughs> and digital identity can help solve this. For example, like if you're trading, let's say on a Dex, and there's a requirement for the user to be eighteen plus. Yeah. Right. Uh, the regulator doesn't really require the name of the mm. user, right? They might request like source of funds or whatever. And with digital identity, you can prove, right, that you're 18 plus. You don't need to tell the regulator that you're 20 or you're 60, but you're 18 plus. Just right? enough, all they need Just to know enough. and And then no you more, can give right? the source of funds. You don't really need to give your name right. if you don't want to. It, is, that, is that being built in a FastX ecosystem? Yes, yes, right now we're working on that and it's gonna be launched, I think in the next quarter. Last question for you, lightning style, real quick. Give us a prediction for how the Web3 space will evolve and how FastX will fit into that. The Web3 space will evolve. Um, it's a very hard question, actually. <laughs> it's a hard one to answer it's in gonna 10 seconds. Evolve. But... It's going to evolve uh, for sure. Yeah. And FastX is striving to be at the top of this evolution. Amazing. Congrats on your success so far. Looking forward Thank to you. seeing where it goes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.